Ludmila. Hi. And welcome to Fab TV. Thank you for having me. Your documentary is so intriguing that um, I was reading about one in four people have some type of mental health issue, but the more I got into what your journey's about, I think we all have some type of mental health issue. So how did your journey start with this uh, exposing everything about you and telling the world about our, our, pro our problems that we all have? Yeah. I think uh, all of us at some time of our lives, we, we're going to struggle with something, you know. Of course, after the pandemic, there was like this boom, like everyone was really um, suffering more because we all got caught out of guard. And with me, it was kind of like that. And of course, my life was a little weird because I started acting uh, with 10 years old. So I grew up in a spotlight and I thought everything was fine. And of course, when you grow up acting, with people watching you, you have all this kind of expectations towards you and you don't want to disappoint. So you just want to be the best version of yourself. But at some point in my life, I start questioning myself and like who I really was. Uh, am I a result of people's expectations or do I really like this? And, and I realized there's a lot about me I didn't know. And then move, when I decided to move to America, it was because I was on this search to actually try to see what I like to do. Do I really like acting? You know, test myself and give myself a, a chance to actually start from scratch in something completely new. At some point in my life when I was 36, I started having panic attacks, which is something that I never understood. I always heard about it and I was like, you know, I just didn't know. I didn't understand what a panic attack was, why people complain about it. And there is always this uh, judgment, like if you're going through a mental health problem, it's not really a illness, you know? So when you say like you're depressed, it's like, oh, it's just, you know, come on, let's, let's do this, you know? There is a lot of judgment towards like mental health. But then when I had my first panic attack, it was really strong. And I was so like confused because I didn't know what was uh, what's happening. And my body was shutting down completely. And it got worse and worse and worse. And my panic attacks, they, they start coming like once a week and then to the point that it was like many times toward the tour, uh, during the day. And at some point I stopped working, I stopped going out, I stopped seeing people, I stopped socializing, I start, you know, questioning myself and my, my sanity. And it was a very difficult moment when it's, it's very lonely as well because no one really understands what you're going through besides yourself. So it's very lonely. And I feel very privileged because during that process, I had a chance to meet great professionals and read amazing books. And um, I just find this amazing information and teachings and lessons that helped me so much and made my, my whole process like less painful. And, and I, my healing process was faster too because of all that. So because I felt so like um, privileged to have access to all this, when I got better and my panic started going away and I start getting my life back together, um, I thought that I needed to, to give something back, you know, because I was very grateful to the universe for all the good that I receive. So then I had an idea to do a documentary about it because I also wanted to connect to the people that probably like me feel very lonely as well. And I wanted to try to talk about mental health in, in, in our daily basis, not like as a, as a, with any weight, you know, like just as a normal conversation, I think we just, without this judgment that comes with it. And, and the documentary was to pretty much pass along my experience because maybe my experience can help other people and to pass along the information that I learned that completely changed my life. You know, as a director, I've made a few documentaries. I wouldn't know how to put together a documentary about my mental health. So how did you put that together? That seems oh, so intriguing God. to me. It was crazy because, um, 
yeah, it was very difficult. Right, right. Um, so this is this is my, this is a tough question. <laughs> how do you tell a story about yourself about mental illness, and how did you put that together to make this me documentary? How did you put this together? Yeah, so um, in the beginning, I just collected the interview, so I had a script of the points that I wanted to talk about in the documentary. And then it was like eight hours or interviews with different kinds of professionals, neuroscientists, um, psychiatrists, and doctors, and a shaman. And, you know, I mix a little bit of uh, uh, spirituality with everything. So they're, they're like different backgrounds of people. They're all talking about the same thing and all the information, somehow they connect. Mm. So it's a, it's a movie for everyone. Um, so I had the interview. And I had no idea, I still didn't think about talking about my experience because I was going through the experience mm -hmm. uh, as I was filming. I actually, at some point during the, during the, the shooting, my health got really bad. And then I had, I, on top of everything, I had a physical a problem as well, a health problem. And I had to take care of that. It was just so much that was building up and then I stopped editing because I was editing the film and I stopped editing for like six months because I needed to dedicate myself completely to my physical and my mental health. And during that time, I didn't even know if I was gonna go back to the film because it was very difficult, everything for me. And I was like, well, maybe, maybe it's not gonna be it. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm not gonna get out of this situation. You know, it was a very difficult time. And then, when I got better, it came to me that I was like, wait a minute, the, f the movie is the process. Because if I'm gonna talk about something so um, sensitive like this, and I wanted to help people, I wanted to be honest in this process. I need to be vulnerable as well, mm -hmm. and put a little bit of my experience because that it's gonna open a, a big door for people to connect, you know? And, and people can relate to, to what, I, what I went through. So I need to, be, to put my story in it. And the, so the idea to actually talk about my process, it was in the end when I was editing all these amazing interviews because I needed something to connect everything, mm -hmm. you know? And then my story is just like, um, it's like a thread that connect people to the subject but once you start watching the movie it's not about me it's about whoever is watching it's about you yeah. you know so the me that i the name me is not me ludmila is me the person that is watching the film it's Got the, it. all of us Got you it. know so have you shown the film to some people so the movie premiere in brazil and it's been a huge success over there i'm just very very happy because it's doing really well and people come to me to talk about it and I get messages all the time. That's what the question I wanted to ask you. So what are people's reaction to your film? What has been like the, the main comments that, that come or the main reactions from your film? It's been honestly better than I ever imagined because at some point I was like, are people gonna be interesting in hearing about this? You, you doubt yourself as yeah. a filmmaker, right? It's like, and then hearing and then seeing people's reactions, some people come out of the film crying and some people like on the premiere, they're just coming to me and like giving like massive hugs and feeling incredibly connected. And, and now I get messages on Instagram and people are sharing so much more. They actually sharing, they're putting their heart out to me. Like if they know me, of course they knew me because of my career in Brazil, but like they know me as a friend now. So I, I, I think I opened up a channel that that was my intention. So I wanted to create this community with people feel comfortable talking about these subjects. And in Brazil, that's all I was doing like the past two months is like talking about this more and more and more. So people feel comfortable in their skin to actually speak about it. It's not a lot of people that have access to therapy, for example, some mm -hmm. people can afford it. Mm -hmm. So like um, having a community where you can talk about it, I can suggest books, there is the movie to watch, and you know, it's something that, it's a, it's a little bit of help at least, you know. You can make a TV show coming off this, or you can make another documentary coming off of this, because it's so, you know what, people don't like, when you have a mental health problem, like I do too, um, it, 
people don't want to talk about it. Oh, you'll get better. Oh, you're okay. You'll get past it. And it's like, no, I'm not, you know, and you got to like, in our society, it makes you like, it's not a cool thing to talk about. Yes. And I'm glad you're talking. That's why I'm doing this today. Cause it's like, I think we all, I don't think it's one in four people. I think we all have this, a, a version of it in us that we have to overcome. And I think that's part of what, part of what you had or have or had, and you just got to fight it too. Yeah. Culturally, we are trained to take care of our physical health. And even that we don't take good, mm -hmm. much, very good care sometimes. Um, but culturally, we're not trained to talk about our feelings. Especially guys, Especially by the way. Especially man. man it's, you like, know? it's like you go through a breakup. You can't tell your, hey, oh, you, oh you'll find another girl. No, what? Yes. What? No, that's not the right answer. That's exactly. not, you want them to, you know, let's go bowling. Let's go talk about it, you know? <clears throat> yeah. So that, that's a big problem with the guy part. Just As yeah. you knew, you immediately knew that guys don't talk about it. Exactly, exactly. So men struggle a lot, struggle a lot with that. And so because we're not trained to talk about our emotions, we start building up our emotions, which was my case, you know, I was like working all the time and I didn't have time to struggle, to suffer. So you just put stuff under the rug to a point that you build up, build up and your whole body start sending these alerts. Like I cannot live like this anymore. You need to start processing your emotions. Wow. You need to you need to take care of your mental health. You need to start learning how to say no sometimes. No to because you need to be by yourself, because you need to rest, because you work too much. So we always we live like trying to please people all the time. But are we pleasing ourselves as well? I, I think we we neglect ourselves most of the time. I know? feel like I'm in a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> like she's right, she's right. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Fernando, make more time for yourself, Fernando. Fuck. <laughs> well, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank I can't you. wait to see this film. I so. can't wait for you to, to I, watch. And... I can't because it's everything you're talking about. I'm like, that's me, that's me, yes, you, me, us, everyone in this room. It's yes. like, it's so, yeah, I think, the... I think this, this is going to help, it's definitely going to help people. I, I really hope so. We have the second one that um, we're going to start shooting next year. Oh, a second one? It's a, it's a trilogy, actually. Wow. Oh, this wow. documentary, wow. yeah. It's going to be me, you, and us. Oh, God. That's so cool. Very yeah. cool. <laughs> thank well, you. Well, it's such a pleasure. Such thank a pleasure. Thank you for thank having you. me. Thank it you. was a pleasure. Thank you for the therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> thank All right. you for having me. Thank you. That's good. We'll cut it. Really, thank you.